to the page entitled Properties of Systems with the dripping marker font. Those first instructions are pretty easy. Graph it however you choose. When I say however you choose, what do I mean? You can use intercepts. You can use point slope form. You can use slope intercept form. You can do one with slope intercept form, one with point slope form. One with intercepts, one with enter point slope form. One with point slope form. I said that one already. One with intercepts, one with y intercept form. Slope intercept form. I don't care. Just graph it. Go. I'm going to use two different methods to show you guys extra practice. I'm going to do this one with slope. I'm going to put it in standard form, and then I'm going to use the x and y intercepts. And uh. and the blue one I'm going to put into slope intercept form. What? Six. What did I put? I put four. Thank you. All right, we have graphed them however you chose. You can see that they intersect and you can see that they have different slopes, right? What conclusions about this system can you come to once we have graphed them? What are some things you can tell me about this system? Please notice there is no right or wrong answer. All you have to do is tell me something about this system. So there is no need for everybody to be scared to talk because you can't get it wrong. Go. Excellent. They have an intersection. So there is a solution. How many solutions? One. There is a solution. Right? Because they intersect. What is it about these two lines that allow them to cross? Look at the properties of the line. One thing allows them to cross. What is it? Yes, Tavlin. Okay. Oh, it should be negative, but carry on. Yeah, both slopes are negative, but. The slopes are what? Look at the slopes, guys. 
They're both linear, so they both make a straight line, so they can't curve, so they can never touch more than once. But something about this system means that they are going to touch once. What is it? Tavlin is on the right track, just like I've said for the last three units. When in doubt, find, look at the slope. What is it about the slope that is going to make those lines cross? A system is a group of equations. So you have to look at this whole thing. You cannot look at each equation. So if you're going to look at the whole thing, you need to look at the whole thing down here. What is it about that that makes them cross? Yes? Exactly. They are different slopes. So they have to cross. That is the only thing that matters here. There is a solution because they intersect. Why do they intersect? They have different slopes. Now, Fatima made the wise observation that because they are linear system, it is a linear system, that different slope will only allow for one intersection. The next one. If I graph that, what will happen? 4y equals negative 2x plus 12, y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. The blue one. Uh, 2y equals negative x minus 12. What do you see is the case here? <coughs> Excellent. And what will that mean? That they are parallel. So what will that mean? They're never going to cross. So what's the conclusion? Parallel lines don't cross, so what does that tell us about the system that includes parallel lines? Read the first conclusion we made. Use that to make your second conclusion. What was our first conclusion? Karina? There's only one solution because they intersect. Well, what's our conclusion here? There is no solution because... They don't intersect. Why don't they intersect? There's no solution. Because, hey, Mr. Keeley, what can I do for you? Regular? Uh, like, I have one or two that I keep around here. This one, and that one, and that one. There's no solution because they do an intersect. Why don't they intersect? They can't intersect. Why? Okay, excellent. Everybody cool? So what are our choices right now? In some systems, there can be one solution in linear systems. In some linear systems, there can be no solutions because they might be parallel. Let's do the third one. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out.
What do you see? It's the same line, isn't it? So how many times are those lines going to touch each other? Infinitely. So what's our conclusion? First, let's graph it, because you guys need practice graphing this. How are you going to graph 5 thirds? What are your options? You could go 1, 2, and put it in here at 5 thirds. Is that exact? So what's a better way to do it? Make the graph in thirds. So I would go up one, two, three, there's one. One, two, three, there's two. Five thirds, one, two, three, four, five. Now, here's where it gets tricky. If I keep the x's on the same scale, then can I just go down one, two, and over one, two, three? Is that okay? It's not? Of course it is. Why is it okay, Nicole? Yeah, if I go down two, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, and then out three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, I'd be right there, yes? That's down two, six down, nine out, right? Let's check. Down two, out three, down two, out three. Oh, it would have worked. When doesn't it work? When do you have to be careful if you change one gra one axis? If I didn't have this x-axis on this same scale and I said that was one, could I go down two and out three? No, of course I couldn't. Because going out three would really be going out nine thirds, wouldn't it? God be careful about that. So anyway, there's the graph. So you practice that, and then of course the other one is going to look exactly the same. They're going to be right on top of each other. So what's our conclusion? There's how many solutions, Iessa? There's infinite solutions because they're the same line. So they intersect infinitely. So take those three conclusions we just made and you are not allowed to solve these. There's no graphing, no substitution, no elimination. I just want to know the number of solutions possible. What was the hint? Same thing that's been the hint for every single question in the last three units. What should you be checking? Slope. If the slope's the same and the y-intercept is different, how many solutions? If the slope is the same and the y-intercept is different, how many solutions? Zero. If the slope is different, how many solutions? One. If the slope and the y-intercept are the same, then it is infinite. How are you going to do it? The first two shouldn't be a problem because it's x's and y's. Everybody seems to have trouble with c because I changed it to p's and q's. You're allowed to do work, you're just not allowed to solve it. Okay. If the slope is the same and the y-intercept is different, then how many... What does that look like on a graph? Lulu just did it. There's a slope. Now, if the y-intercept of the next line is different but the slope is the same, that line is going to slide down and make what? Parallel line. Will they connect? No. If the slope is different, does anything else matter? 
Once you have a different slope, what's going to happen? One intersection. If the slope and the y-intercept are the same, then what's going to happen? Infinite, because they're the same line. So you got to look at that and figure out if you can solve, figure that out without solving the system. So please understand what I'm asking you for. I am not asking you for a coordinate. I'm asking you for one of three symbols, a zero, a one, or infinity. You decide how. I can do it without doing any algebra. You guys probably need to do a bit of algebra. I can do it without doing algebra because I've done this a million times. So you can talk to your neighbors. I don't understand why you guys don't share when we are doing notes. You sit there and you try to solve it yourselves and you look like you're contemplating the meaning of life. It's not that difficult. Talk to each other. Share your knowledge. This is not a test. You are not being graded. The other person is not going to be better than you because you were talking about it. When you are ready with your one, zero, and infinity for each of these, because you don't know which is which yet, put your finger on your nose. I know, I know, that's why I did it. That's why I tried to say it fast. You know, as I changed my speed of talk, when you're ready, and then I saw you, put your finger on your nose. So I would catch you with your finger on your nose. I did it on purpose. You ready? Do it. Yeah! Do it! Yeah! Nobody else? Only my front corner? more fingers yeah all right so let's look at this first one guys we're just gonna look at the first one to give you an idea now you're more than welcome to slope intercept them both and if you do so you're going to get 2y equals negative x plus 6 y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 then you're going to look at the bottom one, you're going to see y equals negative x minus 2. Are the slopes different? Are the slopes different? As soon as you see the slopes are different, what do you know? One solution. The team, I'm going to say this again. You were not allowed to solve the system. I did not want the coordinates. I wanted you to tell me how many solutions there were. That's not solving a system. Solving a system, we spent an entire period yesterday solving yeah. systems. Solving a system gets me a coordinate. Is that a coordinate? No. All right, now, shortcut. I don't need to do this because I know that I have to get y isolated, right? So I know I've got to do one divided by two at some point, don't I? So I know I've got a slope of one half there. This slope is one divided by one. So I can see right away I've got different slopes. Got it? Let's look at the second one. I only care about slope, yes? But I have to check the y-intercept. So I know that I gotta get y by itself, right? So I'm going to have a slope of three, oh, negative 3 over 5 and a y-intercept of 9 over 5. Come down here. I'm going to have negative 6 over 10. What do you know? Same slope. Yes? 
and 10 and 18. 9, 5. So what do we got? They got the same slope and the same y-intercept. So what is it? Infinite. And now this one. What's my slope? Does it really matter? Like, that, does it matter? Because you guys are used to seeing x and y. You could do it that way, but would it matter, Max? Whichever one you say is x or y doesn't really matter, does it? Right? It's how you set it up, Mr. Harder. That box right there. If you're taking the last giant tube, please call Betty. If you're taking the second to last giant tube, please call Betty. Two more full, thank you. So, Max, if we go what you say, if you call that one X, you call that one Y, then you're isolating Q, right? But if you go the other way, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as, because if the lines are the same, they're gonna be the same, right? But just check, what's two times two? Four, what's five times, how does five get to 10? How does 30 get to 15? So if they're all multiplied by two, aren't they the same lines? Now, yes, Tavlin. Okay, if I do this, two P minus five Q, equals 30 and 4p minus 10q equals 15. Ah yes, you're right. Thank you. That's why I did this one. Because it looks good, doesn't it? Times 2, times 2, times 2. Except it's not, is it? So what's different? Are the slopes going to be the same? Because it's times two and times two. What's different? The constant. So if the slopes are the same, but the constant is different, then what, how many solutions is it? Zero, thank you. Thank you, Tavlin. Is everybody good with properties of systems? Okay, turn the page over. Last thing. Last thing in all of grade 10, word problems. Everybody says they can't do word problems. Every single person says they can't do word problems. Doesn't matter how good you are in math, they can't do word problems. Every single one of you, right? Okay. When you read a word problem, do you know the answer? No, of course not, because then it wouldn't be a word problem, would it? Right? So if I told you the numbers are 18 and 27, is that a word problem? No, that's a solution. So we need to think about what it is we are looking for. Read this question to me. Sum of two numbers, 176, their difference is 48. Find the numbers. What must we find? Two numbers. Are those numbers unknown? No, they're totally unknown. You have no idea what those two numbers are, do you? What are the two numbers, Priyanka? You don't know. What do we give in math to numbers that we don't know? Variables. How many variables do I need? Two. Let x equal number one. Let y equal number two. Now, do we know something about these numbers? What? They add to 176. So, how do I write that in math class? X plus Y equals 176. What else do we know about these numbers? The difference is 48. So, what's difference? Subtraction. 
x minus y equals 48. Why are word problems hard? Do we know how to solve systems? Don't we know how to solve systems? Now, as you guys figured out yesterday, when I showed you two different ways to solve systems, some work well in one situation, some work well in another situation. What would be the better of the two, elimination or substitution right here? Why elimination, Tavleen? Because the y's cancel out, yes? If I add these, will y disappear? Yes. So what is x plus x? 2x. What is 176 plus 48? You might need your calculator. I'm going to quickly add them. 6 and 8 is 4. Carry the 1. 224. What's x? One hundred and twelve. What do I do with that X? Plug it in anywhere else. One one two plus Y equals one seventy six. Y equals what? Sixty four. That took ten seconds. All word problems are exactly the same. You have an unknown, you give it a variable. The word problems tell you what to do with those variables. You turn that into math, right? Word problems are always that simple. So look at the next one. What don't I know? Or what do I, what is the unknown? Of what? Yeah, of what though? Chocolate bars and pop, right? So I need some variables, don't I? Because there's two unknowns, yes? What should the first variable be? Who was that? Dylan? Dylan says C equals chocolate. I like that. Why? Because I get tired of you guys using X and Y for everything. Because as soon as I change the letter, you tell me you can't do it anymore. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This triangle is PQR. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> What's the other variable? P. Wait a minute. The funny, the joke is that I wrote it yellow. Because P is yellow. Now, what do I know about chocolate bars and pop? 4C, 3P, 5, 30. What else do I know? 2C plus P equals 220. Now what's the better one to use, elimination or substitution? Substitution, why? Because they don't cancel and P equals 2.2 .2 minus 2C, doesn't it? Right? So what do I do with that expression? Where does it go? Back up there and I use it to find C. Once I have C, I put it there and I use it to find P. Everybody got it? You're going to do that on your own in a minute. Okay. Now, the first one, I walked you through the whole thing. The second one, you did this part, and I walked you through the equations. So in this third one, I want you to do everything up to whether we decide elimination or substitution. Talk to your neighbor. Remember, the instructions at the top of that page will tell you what to do. Don't flip back and forth. Just look up here. There are the key points. Figure out 
the variables and the system for number three. Kathleen, I'm happy to see you're that well hydrated. I will have to write many more yellow peas. Although if she drinks that much water, her pee will not be yellow. Can anybody tell me the variables they are going to use? Not the equation, just the variable. Okay, so let S equal startup and let M equal monthly B. All right, excellent. Everyone agree? Okay, once you have those, word problems should be easy, yes? Because the question tells you what to do. After one month, Jen paid 260 bucks. How many startup fees do you pay? One. That's why it's called the startup fee. So an S plus how many monthly fees after one month? Just one. After one month. How much is that? 260. After six months, how many startup fees? One. Plus how many months? 6M equals what? 435. There's your system. What would you use? They are both equally effective here. Why? Because you can isolate both S and M there, right? Or you could subtract and eliminate S right there, couldn't you? Both of them would be acceptable. And we're going to stop there. I'm going to let you guys do that as part of your work today. Okay? Now, this last one is the most difficult. Because you guys don't really understand money. But you're very smart kids. Try and set up the everything. Don't do the work yet. Just try and set it up. Remember, variables. Variables make equations. Equations make systems. Go. This one's, this one's actually really hard. But if you follow the steps, if you understand what's happening, you should be okay. MJ much more frightening than me? Well, I find it wonderful or difficult to ascertain why so much French is done in my math class. Because I know if I went into MJ's class, I would not see any of these on the desk. And yet you all feel no problem preparing yourself for your French exams in my class. No. No. And? I live all day, every day, and I speak no French. Every day I do math. And not as a math teacher. <laughs> Mais Francais.
Oui. L'université euh, doit... Non. Tu dois les mathématiques pour l'université aussi. It doesn't matter, Max. Because everybody knew what I said. It doesn't matter. Really? Hey, everybody do this equation and systems now. I know, it's totally different here. I, I don't run a class at all like that. I give you nothing to do. Whatever. Okay, so let's talk about this because it is difficult. What can you do? You have two unknown investments, yes? So how many variables do you need? Two. We'll use X and Y. X is investment one. Y is investment two. What do I know about the investment? How much money did I put in? Two grand. Some of it was in investment one. Some of it was in investment two. So what is the equation? Equals y, right? So x plus y equals 2,000. And then Dylan just isolated one of them right away. Because there's two investments. Those two unknown amounts of money, I have $2,000. I'm giving some to Lauren to invest, and I'm giving some to Ayesa to invest. Right? Excellent. Now, I earned 8% per year on one of them. What is 8%? 0.08 on one of those investments. How do you find the percentage of, an, of any number? You multiply by the percent, right? So I have 0.08x, yes? Plus how much of y? Point 0.10 of y equals what? 109. Because my interest is a percentage of my investment. Now, you needed to know that, right? Maybe. Or you take your knowledge of previous word problems and know that every number matters, yes? You've dealt with the 2,000, you've dealt with the 8, you've dealt with the 10. The only thing left is the 190. Now, what about that second equation bothers you? So what are you going to do? You can keep the decimals, but you don't need to, because what are you allowed to do to this equation that will keep it be the same equation? Multiply. What if I multiply this by 100? What happens to this decimal? What happens? They all go away, don't they? So could I also write 8x plus 10y equals 19,000? Those would both be OK. And then would I have my system? And then I would solve it. Yes? Okay. All word problems are the same. What if there's three unknowns? Then how many variables do you need? Three. And then you would make a system with three. And you would just try to eliminate one of them, find one of those letters, sub it back in, find the second letter, sub it back in, find the third letter. What if there's four unknowns? Four variables, eliminate one of them, somehow, with either substitution or elimination, right? Good? All right, so I am done the whole course. Congratulations, you have completed the most difficult course that you have ever had in, ma in high school, in school in general. Okay, I know many of you feel French is more difficult. That is fine. Now, that being said, all that being said, 
All that being said, everything you do to make your brain stronger is better. I don't care if you choose to learn Swahili. That will make your brain better. Everything you can. Learn them at the right times. Don't wonder why you are not succeeding in one thing when you do not give it all of your attention, when it is time to give it your attention. That is all I am trying to say. Because I tire of answering this question. I was so much better in math last year. But you don't really give math 100% of your time in math class. That's all I'm saying. All right, listen please. Your book has had two textbook pages, one for substitution, one for elimination. I said do a few. It also had some stuff on properties of systems. You can have a look at that if you want. It really takes only two seconds. It also has some word problem stuff. But the last three pages in your book are the thing I'm interested in. The systems review. If you only wish to do that, that is fine. But, as I have said numerous times, if you practice as little as possible, then expect a result commensurate with that amount of practice. Okay? If you practice once a week, and you go to the Olympics, you end up being Michelle Kwan. Okay? She's the silver medalist who fell like 17 times and shouldn't even have won a silver. I don't know why she got a silver. She fell during her skate routine like four times and still managed a silver, which is why we should all know how corrupt skating judging is. Actually, how corrupt all judging is. A judged sport cannot be fair. She's American. She's American. She fell like four times. Just, Never mind! The point I am trying to make is if you don't practice until you have as close to perfection as possible, you cannot expect to be rewarded with perfection. So, if you only do the review and you go into your final on Tuesday, or you try to write your final and make a key for me by Friday, you are going to have trouble with the systems part if you only do the minimal amount of practice I have asked of you. If you want the A, practice enough to get the A. If you want a B, practice enough to get a B. Okay? That's the point I'm trying to make. 